I feel like they have kind of made me more of myself because especially as I was younger, I was very afraid to express myself just because I was worried about what others would think and worried that like, oh, if I can't pull it off, because I've kind of liked the more slightly alternative look. Now that I'm older, you know, I don't really, you know, I don't care what people say as much anymore. You know, I get the oh, you look like a bull with that nose ring or, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's whatever it's, I don't care any, any, anymore. Cause at the end of the, the day, ear piercing should be for yourself and not for anyone else. Hi friends. I'm here today with Anne. Um, she's a part of our Avanti community and I'm so excited just to hear what you have to say about personal transformation. Um, but before we go anywhere, why don't we start by hearing a little bit about you? Um, hi, my name's Anne. Um, I'm 29 years old, um, Oregon native. Um, I've always kind of been into the piercing scene for a while now. I, I guess I was kind of a late bloomer because I never really thought that I could get anything other than my ears because of my work. I just work for um, just a standard office job in the HR department doing payroll. So they do kind of have some strict rules about piercings, but I've gotten away with a couple, thankfully, thanks for, to the Avante crew. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, what's it like working for HR? Um, so it's actually, well, it's hard to believe, like, it was a kind of a recent career change. I'm still with the same company, um, but I was asked to join their HR department as a payroll admin. It was a pretty big switch for me. I've been doing it for about a year now, but um, I really like it so far because, you know, I get to know everybody within the company because they all come to us with questions and, um, Sometimes they're interested about my earrings, so that's kind of fun to tell them about. <laughs> I have to hide the septum, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's um, even though I'm I'm really kind of an introvert and shy, you know, it's, it's still nice to learn more about the people that I work with because it's a relatively big company. There's about almost a thousand in in our building, wow. so mm -hmm. so it's 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 nice to get to know more more people and be able to help them. Yeah, that's super cool. What were you doing before? Um, so same company, but it's, so it's a health insurance company. So I was in their membership accounting department, which is basically, um, I was in there in on the individual side. So I helped members apply for health insurance and I handled their enrollments, their eligibility and their billing along with help from customer service and sales. Oh, fun. Yeah, uh, it's nothing too exciting. Um, HR is a little bit more fun. But <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's super cool. Uh, what is one misconception? Because there, there's so much that people hear about HR. So what was like one misconception before you joined the HR team versus like, you're like, oh, this is what it is. <laughs> right. Um, we really do care. We really do try to help the employee. A lot of people think that HR care is more of more on the business side versus more on the employee side but what I really like about our HR team and especially my bosses is that they really do care for the employee and they really do try to do whatever they can to um, help the employee out if there's an issue and I'm just really happy that you know we we are able to you know take the time to listen to their issues figure out something to help them out and not just be like well Oh, well, it is what it is, you know, so I, I actually do appreciate that we that we we do care. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> we we do care. Yeah, that's really cool. You know, and it's it's probably a lot of um, a lot of people skill requirement, you know, to be able to help interpersonally. Mm hmm. So you really have to be um, be able to listen and kind of empathize or sympathize with the with the employee. And I'm glad that. And we also try to do trainings on um, how to better talk to our employees, so we don't um, accidentally make them feel worse, <laughs> and um, just makes them know that we're listening and that we're on their side. 
Yeah, that's really cool. I think that's the key to a good company is having a really strong HR department to kind of bridge exactly. that. Because mm -hmm. yeah. otherwise you just have a bunch of frustrated people who don't know how to communicate. <laughs> exactly. Or well, we just get yelled at all day. So not a fun time for anybody. <laughs> no, I, I did the whole call center thing. It ooh. No, I'm like a Never again. crier. So like if someone yells at me or cries and I'm also going to cry, like <laughs> Like, no, no, we're both crying. <laughs> and now we're both crying. Like, what is <laughs> This isn't helpful. <laughs> um, so if I remember correctly, you have quite a few piercings. Yeah. Um, I have, I don't know if you can see, I have my double nostrils like you, and yeah. then my septum, and then various, I don't know if you, I don't know if you could see that, various ear piercings. Yeah. Probably gonna add more to the collection once this is all over. So I'll probably be seeing you once this is all done. <laughs> um, you started, did you start on your ears or your face first? Your ears, right? I started on my ears first, um, just because that's all that I thought that I could get away with because yeah. with most companies with their piercing policies, they really only talk about the face. Um, so I was like, well, they really don't say anything about ears. So, um, I kind of just, as soon as I turned 18, I kind of just went at it with my ears. And then, um, I started to kind of think about facial piercings because I've always wanted them. But like I said, I never thought that I could get away with them because I was like, oh, um, I'm going to get turned down for, 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 for jobs. Um, how am I going to make money? Yeah. Um, but a coworker of mine, all of a sudden, she just reached up into her nose and flipped down her, her septum. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're so lucky. Um, I should have got my septum done while I was still in school. So then I wouldn't have to worry about taking it out for work. Cause, um, and she was like, no, as long as you don't flip it up and down too much during the healing process, then you're fine. And so I got my um, septum done and then I had a really good piercer who told me, she's like, you know, just leave it up as long as you can. Really, I pretty much, so I was really good about not flipping it up and down too much during the healing process. So, um, well, obviously when a piercing is healing, you want to leave it alone for the entire time. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I just got really bad advice because I'm not a piercer. Oh, no, you're good. But, um, but yeah, I was really happy that, um, and I think that's why a lot more people are getting septums now. It's because I think a lot of people kind of have this inner, like, I want to be pierced and cool. And, but, um, again, like they have a bunch of worries like me, like, oh, what, what will my family think? What will my friends, um, what will my job think? But what I really like about the septum is that you can hide it. And so you can flip it up for business and then flip it down, down for <laughs> I like to tell people that the septum is the mullet of piercings exactly for that reason. And I think I've said it like in so many of these videos. I'm like, oh yeah, the septum's the mullet of piercings. Cause it is, exactly. you know? It's like, oh, I'm at business, so I'll just hide it. And then, or I'm like, I'm about to see grandma, so I've got to hide it, and you know? And then like, you can go home and you can just like be yourself. <laughs> exactly. So that's what I was really happy about it. And at first it was kind of like, I mean, this might sound silly, but it was kind of like, ooh, it's my little secret. <laughs> but. No, it's true. Yeah. I totally so, yeah. get that. So yeah, I was really glad that I talked to more people who were kind of in that piercing scene and um, were able to give me tips. So, and then I, and actually I was there, uh, you were there when I got my trip, when I got my double nostrils because I went in with my roommates to look at jewelry. And then I saw you with your double nostrils and then your septum. I was like, oh, I've seen that before. I think it's so cute. But I wasn't sure if my work would like let me do that because um, really the only facial piercing that they allow is a stud on the nose. Mm -hmm. so, you, so you could have a nostril, but no ring. It, it has to be a stud. But I was like, and obviously they said no septums. I tried to get away with it, but I got busted. So. <laughs> Got busted, but um, I was like, "Well, the handbook says a stud on the nostril. It didn't say only one." So I decided to 
do my double nostrils, which was kind of like a spur of the moment thing. I actually wasn't planning on getting any on anything pierced, but mm -hmm. I kind of have the shiny ball syndrome where I see jewelry and then I want it. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, you know, I got, you know, I got the doubles done and then I just really liked it and no one at work said anything except compliments. So nice. Yeah. So yeah I got away with it. <laughs> Score. I mean, it looks really lovely on you. Thank you. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, so what, I guess, what was your first piercing then? Like your first ever piercing? My first ever piercing was like most pe people, um, my first lobes. I got those done when I was in fifth grade. And I remember always being so jealous about, cause all my friends had their ears pierced as babies. And yeah. I was so jealous, like all throughout grade school like, I want my ears pierced, I want my ears pierced. And my mom's like, no, nah, because you got to take care of them. And um, no, nah, because, you know, you're, you're, too, you're too young. You know, you got to take care of them so they don't get infected. Um, but I'm actually kind of glad that my mom had me wait because um, I was talking to another piercer about this too, saying that one of his favorite piercings to do are ear piercings on kids who are six or seven because it's one of the very first things that they get to decide for themselves yeah um with parental consent of course but um and that actually kind of took me back I'm like oh then I'm kind of glad that my mom had me wait because I remember getting them done like I remember the kind of the build-up the anticipation the anxiety um and then feeling so proud of myself after I got them done. Like I got to pick out the jewelry myself. And um, I just remember being so proud of myself. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so brave. <laughs> I got stabbed. <laughs> I didn't cry. Oh, that's awesome. But yeah, I mean, so unfortunately, since we weren't, um, since, you know, piercings were pretty um, new to me back then, we unfortunately went to Eclairs because we didn't know better. <laughs> But um, going forward, if I if I ever have kids and they're old and they're old enough to express to me that they want their ears pierced, then I will definitely take them to a place like Avanti. <laughs> <laughs> no piercing guns. Yeah, I mean the piercing guns they they're so popular, but they really can do more harm than good just with blunt force trauma and. You know that's where we see a lot of like ears growing on the earring situations. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard horror stories. I had a friend who went in to get her double lobe. She just went to a, she, you know, went to a place like Claire's. Sorry, not to bash on Claire's, but yeah, <laughs> um, no piercing guns. Um, <laughs> she went to get her double lobes, and um, as soon, I know they're called like their piercing guns, but they look like staplers to me. Little staple. They do, yeah. I call them nail and, guns usually, and then I'm like, oh, I mean piercing guns. <laughs> I know, I know, right? <laughs> and it got stuck as soon as she clamped, as soon as she like, it got stuck. No. And, and the poor girl who was doing the piercing, I think um, she might have been new. And oh, I feel so bad for her because obviously she didn't mean for any of this to happen. Um, okay. She was like, oh my gosh, hold this. So my friend is holding the, the piercing gun up to her ear. It's like bleeding and the poor girl is trying to find her manager and she said it was horrible. It was so painful, blood everywhere. And these poor, and, and you know, the uh -huh. kids who were, who were like my age, when I first got there, like six, seven or eight, they're like, they're like, they're in there and they see what's happening to my poor friend. <laughs> and then they're just like, I don't want, mm -mm, not getting my ears pierced. Oh dear. <laughs> oh and, my yeah. And I remember changing out my earrings for like the first time. I don't know if you've experienced this with people have who've come to you with problems, but um, I remember when I was changing out my earrings for for the first time, I couldn't get the I couldn't get the post out. Mm. It was like stuck in there. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's like it's like my ear infused with <laughs> infused <laughs> with, with the with the jewelry, and I'm like. I was like pulling my ear like I can't get it out. No. <laughs> well, that's um, you know, like the the myth that you're supposed to twist your jewelry while it's in your ear. It comes from piercing guns because with the blunt force trauma, 
your ear does kind of like form a special bond with the jewelry <laughs> that you have to twist. Whereas with a needle, that bond doesn't happen. Because <laughs> mm -hmm, it's a lot cleaner, right? So it's yeah, sharp, it, clean. It makes like a space for the jewelry where with the piercing gun, it's like forcing the jewelry where there is no space. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. And so that's why like when you get pierced with a gun, they're like, make sure you twist it is because otherwise it will actually form form a special bond with that jewelry. <laughs> Interesting. Isn't that cool? And gross at the same time. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's fascinating, but that makes a whole lot more sense now. Because, yeah, I definitely, you know, twisted. Like, I probably didn't have clean hands when I was a kid, but, yeah. <laughs> but no, it's definitely, it's just, like, it's more cut and dry. You know, do, do your aftercare. Don't touch them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so easy. Just, just don't touch them. Just spray and leave it alone. <laughs> and leave it alone. Oh, and then you're good. Uh, what was your next piercing then after that? So after that, it was my um, double lobes. Um, do, you, do you kind of want me to go through kind of the whole timeline? Yeah, tell me everything you want to. Sure. So yeah, first were my first lobes in fifth grade. And then we moved on to my double lobes probably sometime when I was in middle school. Um, unfortunately, I, I went back to a place that, you, that used the piercing gun, oops. Um, but I wised up after that. Um, and I think after that, as soon as I, when I was 19, something just kind of clicked in me and I just went to a place and got um, a helix. Oh, so I guess this is my first like non-lobe, non-traditional, whatever, I don't know, you know, Traditional is different for everyone. Um, so this was like my my first cartilage. I was super happy with it. And then the next year I went and got a tragus on my left and then triple lobes soon after that. And then I waited a couple years. Um, then I got my um, Dock piercing because I saw the moon jewelry and I fell in love. I went in for, I was going to go in for like a conch or something, but then I saw um, the the moon jewel jewelry that I saw at Avanti. I'm just like, just kidding. It's so pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it is one of my favorites. I'm never taking it out. And um, so that is one of my favorite earpieces. And then after that, I went in and got my tragus on my uh, right ear and then a conch. And then recently, um, I think it was, I think it was several months ago, I came back to Avanti. Um, and cause I think before, I'm trying to remember cause I got with you guys, I got my double nostrils first. Yes. And then I came back and then I got my conch on my left ear. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. I was looking back through your order history and that's, yeah, that's what that's I saw. Like, <laughs> somewhere in between that, I got my, um, so this is my last piercing. And then somewhere in between that, I got my septum, um, which probably is my favorite just because it's kind of, it's a piercing that I've always wanted and I never thought I could have it. So I'm, super happy that um, I was able to figure something out and then it kind of inspired me to get more and so then I got my double nostrils and yeah I'm super excited and again once um, the uh, closing is lifted I would love to go back and get more support Avanti thank you because I would love to see you guys around for a lot longer <laughs> Yes, I will. And I've been telling, I'm like, I miss you. Like, I miss you guys. You know, like, our, it's the best part of my day was when, you know, the customers would come in and I'd get to hear your story and I'd get to see what you're liking and all of, like how your piercings are healing. And it's so sad that that's not happening right now. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully once this gets, once this is all, is all un, under c control and I hope that you and the rest of the Afonte fam family are are well and safe. Yeah. Yeah, so that'll be awesome. What mm -hmm. are you hoping to get pierced next? Probably um, either a rook or probably just some more um, helix, 
probably, I don't know, like two right here or something or you. Yeah, just because I never really, I'm sorry. You have like a perfect little like frame right here for a flat too. See, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah, like that would be really cute. <laughs> mm -hmm. and yeah, and part of what I like is kind of seeing is coming into the shop and hearing what um, you guys have to say because you, because you know, you've been doing this for a while and it's nice to kind of hear what an expert will say like, oh, you know, for your anatomy, this will probably be more flattering and it's nice to have someone kind of help you along the way. Oh, well, I'm glad that's helpful. Like, it's always fun. I, I see it as like a collaborative art project, you know, mm -hmm. like, it's like, oh, I like this sparkly thing, but I don't know where to put it. And I'm like, you should put it here. And like, you know, I know with myself, there's parts of like my ear or like my face that I see differently than how other people see it. So when they see it in a positive light, I'm always like, oh, well, thank you. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of just, fi it's finding the, finding the beauty and everything. Yeah. And it's just, you're, you know, it, you're pretty much just decorating yourself with pretty jewelry, so. That's, it's so true. It's, mm -hmm. uh, have you felt like the, the piercings and the modifications make you feel more like you? Or have you felt like you were always yourself and this is just a way that you're showing it? Um, I think it's kind of, I feel like they have kind of made me more of myself because especially as I was younger, I was very afraid to express myself just because I was worried about what others would think and worried that like, oh, if I can't pull it off, because I've kind of liked the more slightly alternative look, but I just thought that, like, oh, you know, I can never pull that off. It's not me. Um, Cause I, I thought that people saw me one way and would just always see me that way. I'm like, oh, shy little church mouse. <laughs> and I don't go to church, but. <laughs> But um, yeah, I think it's kind of, um, so once I kind of had that freedom and I learned that I could get some more non-traditional piercings and get away with it, um, I think I have, I've been very happy about expressing myself more. And now that I'm older, you know, I don't really, you know, I don't care what people say as much anymore. You know, I get the, oh, you look like a bull with that nose ring or eh. <laughs> no, you're, but you know it's it's whatever it's I don't care and and, and anymore because at the end of the, the day your piercing should be for yourself and not for anyone else so yeah um, yeah so yeah I guess I have so that part of me has always been there I just got to I was kind of a late bloomer so but That's better awesome. late than never <laughs> I mean, I was too. Like, I didn't really start getting modifications or anything like serious modifications, I think, until probably like the last four years. Oh, wow. So, I was so what was your first? My first like serious modification is my septum as well. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had, I actually just had my lobes pierced. <laughs> oh, and you're, but they're already stretched pretty. Well. Yeah. I've been stretching them for like three years now. So I'm, uh, I'm at, oh, what am I at? I'm like at a 11 16 or something, which is a little bit bigger than a 5 8. So okay. it's, I'm going towards an inch. It's a slow process, but oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm like similar to you, you know, I, I actually grew up super conservative. I'm a pastor's daughter. And so I was always got the, oh, sweet Jessica. <laughs> mm -hmm. Same. <laughs> right. And I was like, okay, but like, I'm a person. And I really like sparkly things and I love tattoos and I think art is beautiful and I want my hair to be like hot pink and you know, all of that stuff. And once you make one little change for yourself where you're like, this is my body, this is my choice. And it is that very like, I'm brave and I did this and I'm me now, you know? And you do care less about what people have to say because that joy of being you feels so much more than any negative. It's like over, goes over any negative comment you could get. Exactly, and that's what I learned too, because I just remember getting my piercings done and just looking in the mirror constantly, just being so giddy and overjoyed, like wanting to take pictures, wanting to show them off. And 
yeah, now the, um, sur surprisingly, I don't get a lot of negative comments usually from older folk about, you know, or I just get kind of just weird, like, well, you have a lot of holes. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> what do you want me to say to that? But, um, <laughs> but um, usually from people more around my age, you know, I get um, a lot more, you know, a lot more accepting, you know, compliments. And so it is nice to hear those, of course, but, um, and then talk with people about what they plan on doing and what they like. But again, you know, back to what I said, you know, at the end of the day, it's what you feel, it's what you think. And if they make, and if it makes you happy and more like yourself, then that kind of what you said, it, it just goes over what, like all the negative and because again, it's, it's not for them. So yeah, nothing yeah. to do with them. Exactly. Which is funny because I think that's the connotation that a lot of people think is that you got, you know, oh, you get tattoos so that people look at you and think you're unique, but you're just tattooed like everyone else. That's like a comment I've heard before. And I'm like, I don't care about anyone else. I didn't get it to be unique. I got it to be me. I happen to be a unique person. Like, <laughs> you know? and exactly. I, yeah, it's, I, I love what you said that whether it's good or bad in someone's eyes, you know, it's for you at the end of the day. It doesn't really matter what anyone else thinks. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's a really powerful truth to be able to own. Exactly. And I think that, you know, with stuff like this, um, with body modification, um, you know, there's still a little stigma attached to it. Um, thankfully, not as much, but maybe I can't say as much because I'm not heavily modified and um, and I haven't been in this scene for like a very long time. So obviously pe people with a lot more piercings and tattoos and have been around for a lot longer than, than we probably face more. Um, but kind of what I'm just tired of hearing just from my own experience is, especially with my nose piercings is Oh, well, you know, guys won't find that attractive. I'm like, oh my, <laughs> who's in your for dude? <laughs> like, yes, like, <laughs> I've also heard that before. Like, okay. <laughs> oh, guys won't find that attractive or, oh, you won't get a guy from that. Oh, if, or if you start seeing a guy, like, he won't like that. I'm like, okay, but like, what makes you think that I'll like him back? exactly it's such a good question like okay but then okay. also I'm like oh no does my husband know that he's not supposed to like me like <laughs> has someone told him not like not told him like don't tell him like <laughs> <laughs> keep it a secret keep it a secret like what oh uh, yeah people just say I'm like what <laughs> okay <laughs> If anything, it's going to attract the people that I do want to be around because they're going to be like, hey, sick piercing, look at mine, like, <laughs> you know? Right, like they're gonna like you for you, not for mm -hmm. of you. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of just like, you kind of already, um, when you meet someone else with uh, piercings, it's kind of, you already kind of know a little about them. So then people are more willing to talk to you and be like, oh, hey, I like this. Or, hey, I've been thinking about getting this. Like, what, like, like, what's your experience or what do you think? So it is kind of, it is nice because then people kind of feel comfortable with you, like yeah. asking questions. And so honestly, it, I've, I've actually had some pretty good ex experiences, you know, talking and meeting with new people who are curious. So. Yeah. If anything, I'm meeting more people. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's very true. Um, you know, having having a lot of um, visible tattoos, like I have a full sleeve and stuff. What I found is interesting is before that, you know, I was more reserved, but now that I I literally wear my heart on my sleeve, you know, like I it's a personal tattoo to me, and it's like wearing your secrets out for the open. It's mm -hmm. it's in turn made me more open as well which I've seen a lot in um, the modified world is people, you know, they, you do, you wear your hearts on your sleeves, on your ears, you know, it's, they're, they're sparkly battle scars essentially. And it, it does lead to for, you know, for the most part, a more like caring and nurturing environment, which is the polar opposite of what you would think. 
exactly. And I always hear people, and at first, I was always afraid to go into a proper uh, piercing or tattoo studio because um, I was afraid that like, oh, I don't fit the look. I have, I have blonde hair. I'm not tatted. I'm not pierced. I'm not wearing punk rock clothes. I'm like, they're just going to laugh at me and tell me to go to Hollister. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Um, that and so and I thought very very wrong and so that was my bad that I because at first I was just like ooh I think that style is really cool but what if I'm not a, really accepted but every shop I've been into has been really accepting really you know and and I've heard this from other people say that some of the nicest people that they've met have been tatted out and pierced and because it's such kind of a welcoming and it, it's very welcoming and um, people feel safe and like that they have friends. So thankfully I was very, very wrong and I felt really bad. I'm just like, oh my gosh, they're all so nice here. Like, like they don't care that I don't look like them. And you know, they're so willing to help and they're so nice. They're so, so that's kind of, if anyone is afraid to get their first piercing at a proper studio, don't be afraid because a good and, repu and reputable shop will be very welcoming and very accommodating. So, yeah, yeah, it, I agree. Like I felt the same way <laughs> even before I started working at one, you know, as I started getting a little bit more pierced, I was always like, oh, I don't belong here. I couldn't even go in like zoomies. Like I felt <laughs> like this was too like too hardcore for me. Like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like I'd go in, I wouldn't make eye contact with the jewelry cases. <laughs> I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of this steel jewelry. <laughs> no, I've been there. I'm just like, oh God, they're going to know I'm not one of them. <laughs> I know. But like, no one cares. cares. No one cares. No one cares. <laughs> it's a, And it's funny because then, you know, on the other side of the counter, I felt the same way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is funny, and I, I hope for anyone listening who's afraid to go to a tattoo shop will then get some hope knowing that maybe the person on the counter also felt once that they couldn't go in the store. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So don't be afraid. A good shop will not care what you look like. They will help you. And yeah. don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Before I let you enjoy the rest of this cloudy Oregon day. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any advice you have for any of our listeners? Um, my advice would be is definitely do your research. If you want to get pierced, definitely look up some reputable shops in your area. Hint, hint, Avantu is one of them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and go in and just remember that whatever you d decide to get it done, it's the only opinion that should matter is yours. Don't get anything just because to, to try to please others. Get it for your yourself, and be, that that way you will like it a lot more. And if you get any negative com comments, you'll be able to kind of brush them off more because piercings can be addicting. They are exciting. You literally like I kind of see it as decorating yourself. So again, really. Do what you want. You will like it a lot more. The negative comments won't mean as much because you'll just be too overjoyed and happy. And again, I can't stress this enough. Do it for you and only you. And it'll be a lot more special and you'll feel like yourself and it's exciting and you'll never stop looking in a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome advice. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time, for sharing your heart. It was great to see you again. <laughs> it was great to see you again. I was hoping that it would be you. I was like, oh, because so I've seen you there a couple of times. I'm like, hi, it's me again. <laughs> I know. I'm like, oh, hello. What are we doing today? <laughs> well, I'm excited to see you in person when this is all over. <laughs> oh, yes. You will see me when this is all over. I'll be first in line. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. And you too. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye.